Proverbs 30, verses 18 and 19. It's on the screen. Let's go. There are three things which are too wonderful for me. Yes, four which I do not understand. The way of an eagle in the air, the way of a serpent on a rock, the way of a sheep in the midst of the sea, and the way of a man with a virgin. We'll title this Marriage and Your Emotions. Marriage and Your Emotions. We have the potential to experience emotions to the extreme within the context of marriage. Extreme positive, extreme negative. Within the context of marriage, we have the capacity or the potential to feel love on one hand and hatred on the other, to feel pleasure and to feel pain, to feel joy and to feel sadness, to feel peace and to feel anxiety, to feel faith or confidence. On the other hand, fear. It's within the context of marriage that we celebrate usually the arrival of a new life and within the context of marriage also we experience the loss of lost loved ones strong emotions and it does seem like for the most part many are not prepared to be stretched you know to accommodate those dimensions of emotions so there's a reason why Solomon said that he did not understand the way of a man who was in love. He used the illustration of an eagle in the air. There's no clear pathway. Spoke about a snake on the rock. Doesn't have any road marked out. Spoke about the way of the sheep on the seas. He said you can compare all those to the way of a man who has fallen in love. Scientists have now helped us to understand it a bit. That when you fall in love, there are some chemicals that are released in your brain. Dopamine and norepinephrine. <laughs> Or you can also call it non-adrenaline. But these are neurotransmitters. When they rush into your brain, they alter everything. They alter the way you see things. In fact, they affect you physically. Change the rate of your heartbeat. Either fasten it or slow it down. You know... <laughs> <laughs> the interesting discovery is that these are the same chemicals that are released in your brain when you take cocaine. <laughs> the very the same effects that cocaine will have on you is the effects that are produced in you when you fall in love. I've been there before, so I understand. <laughs> you, you see, when you take cocaine, I've not been there, that one. <laughs> Just to make it a bit clearer. <laughs> but <laughs> I read it, and they said it's the same as the other one. Then I understand the feeling. <laughs> you know, this feeling of lightheadedness, sharpness of focus, that's what people take cocaine say, that it sharpens their focus and then gives them some, puts them on a superhuman pedestal where they can capture ideas. First of all, they, they, they are relieved of stress and of worries. And then they, they function at a frequency where they see things differently. They, have, they can have visions, they can have dreams. Very interesting. Uh, 
I just read of one man who confessed about what happened to him the first day himself and his wife kissed. And he said that they were walking in the same place. And then, you know, they had fallen in love and then he had proposed to her. And then it just happened, they kissed. He said on the way home, the police stopped him. <clears throat> the police stopped him because he was driving erratically. <laughs> the way a normal drunk, but they had to run the alcohol test on him. <laughs> so he said, <laughs> he said, candidly, I was drunk that day and it was not alcohol. Just because he got a kiss. See, it's cocaine of a different kind. <laughs> Okay, but uh, uh, that's the reality. Because <laughs> I remember when I got intoxicated like that, that um, thinking about her was a major thing I did during the day. I couldn't get out of my mind anywhere at all. And, uh, I couldn't wait to finish work. And, and you know, we met in church. So, and, and she, she was leading one of the units in church. So, somehow, I would just hope that her unit would have something to do in church. <laughs> I remember there was a day I went for a trip, on a trip, and was driving all the way for hours. You know, drove into Lagos. It was late. It was getting dark. And somehow... I persuaded the people in the car, and I was doing the driving anyway, to let us go through the church. And there was a reason. I was hoping. <laughs> ah! Oh, God have mercy. So, no wonder the lady in the Songs of Solomon, you know, wrote in Solomon 8, verse 4. This is New International Version. Daughters of Jerusalem, I charge you. Do not arouse or awaken love until it so desires. Until you are ready, don't go there. You will not be able to think straight anymore. Well, uh, so that's the beautiful thing about the starting point. That's what makes weddings beautiful. That's why, you know, because when you're in that state, you see, it affects the way you even see the atmosphere. It tends to color the atmosphere. Everything takes on a beautiful color. You know, it's like there's music in your soul permanently. The world is a beautiful place. You see? Uh, um, hmm. In fact, should we admit that emotions are so strong, uh, they shut down your capacity for reason. That's what cocaine also does, right? You don't see the world the way it really is anymore. You see, the chemicals help you to color everything in a more beautiful way. That's why you don't even see anything that is wrong with him or with her. That's why sometimes the people around you are trying to draw your attention, you know, <laughs> to something, and you pick fights with them because they are trying to frustrate your destiny okay mm -hmm. so but isn't it amazing that for some people it's just a matter of weeks or just a matter of months for for some a year or years and then the sparks begin to fly and everyone who was part of the beginning of the relationship, who knew how, how crazy they were about each other, who were part of the wedding and how beautiful it is, are surprised and wondering, what is it? Because now they are throwing punches. What, what is it? Well, the chemicals have changed. <laughs> there are dynamics in marriage that create negative emotions. Dynamics like coming to times with the other person's weaknesses and habits. Habits like snoring.
especially if as Christians you didn't sleep in the same room before the, the wedding night then now you sleep in the same night and, and, and you you wake up with the stars <laughs> like someone confessed that on their wedding night his wife woke him up in the middle of the night he said, hope there's no problem he said, <laughs> he said like what <laughs> she said you're snoring he said oh I'm sorry ah <laughs> Excuse me, just come to terms with it. That's what you bought, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sometimes it's just differences in eating habits. Okay. Differences in preferences, preferences of colors, you know, differences in degrees of neatness. Some people like for their things, for their room to be perfectly neat clean and when they put something somewhere they know where they put it if you move it one inch they'll spot it okay <clears throat> like one of us said many years ago that he was so neat he is a neat person absolutely neat and <laughs> if he woke up in the night to go to the bathroom when he came back to continue the sleep, he would lay the bed neat, then lie on it. He couldn't lie on a bed that was rough. When he got married, he, the first time he woke up in the middle of the night to go use the bathroom, when he came back, he woke his wife up and said, please, I want to lay the bed. She said, ah! <laughs> what? You said what? Aren't you going to sleep on it? <laughs> What's happened? just him and the habit he had developed over time it's those things okay and then you talk about relationships with extended family members with in-laws you know and friends and so on so it's these these dynamics begin to release a different set of chemicals altogether and the impact part of those chemicals can be phenomenal. In fact, I found a good summary in Galatians chapter 5 verses 19 to 21. Unconsciously, these are the results. Uh, I'm reading from the New International Version. Galatians 5, 19 to 21. The acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, and debauchery. You wonder why? When the negative emotions begin to kick in, in the marriage, you want more of the positive emotions. And if you don't know where to get the positive emotions from, you begin to look for them from different sources. Sex is one of the major ones. So that's why you have their sexual immorality uh, and impurity and debauchery. And then you have idolatry and witchcraft. Interesting thing here, the Greek word translated witchcraft is pharmakia, and the pharma is P-H-A-R-M-A, -A, from which you have your pharmacy. Because if you see witchcraft here, you tend to think, oh, it's someone flying in the night, right? <laughs> Satan's air force, okay? <laughs> or, or, or someone flying on a broomstick. Or something like that okay or somebody turned it into a cat it's not that this is the use of drugs a long time ago man discovered that there are herbs that you can take and they can alter your state of consciousness that's why how we found marijuana and found cocaine and we found whereas on a normal day a drug being a physical constant uh, a physical substance should be able only to affect the physical part of your body we discovered some of those substances that have the power to affect 
not just your body, but also your mind, and to alter your state of consciousness. And we found those ones that can put us into that state where we feel cool, feel peace. And, and, and in fact, find ourselves, remember, at that superhuman state of thinking where we can capture facts about people or about circumstances that nobody told us. And that's how people became sorcerers. That's why people will listen to someone. When somebody gives you a fact about you that you, the person couldn't have known any other way, you will believe everything else the person tells you, won't you? And these were the same people who created chaos for people's sicknesses and illnesses. That's where the sorcery started from. And the witchcraft. That's what's being referred to here. So when the negative emotions kick in, it's not only in marriage, in every area of life, but I'm saying that within the context of marriage, you will experience the extreme emotions or you have the potential to. So when those negative emotions kick in, we're looking for how to get the positive ones. That's what drives people into witchcraft. Hatred, discord, discord, jealousy, fits of rage. People don't realize that anger sometimes also releases chemicals and we get used to them. But they give us some feelings that we like. Selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, see, rebellion. Okay, and envy. When these, then we allow negative emotions to fester, these are the results they produce. Then it talks about drunkenness, orgies, and the like. Because alcohol also produces the, the result. Okay, or some of those feelings. He says, I warn you as I did before that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. God banned witchcraft in the Old Testament. Why? Though he created man a spiritual being, though he designed for man to experience peace and joy and love, he did not arrange for man to do it through drugs. They are destructive when they become addictive. He has an alternative. When you begin to feel those emotions, the tendency to be bitter, the tendency to be frustrated, the tendency to be depressed, the tendency to be discouraged, the tendency to, you know, be envious or to be greedy or to be hateful, the tendency to uh, be violent. Let me add that. You need a power that is beyond you to manage your emotions and put you on the positive. Amen. Amen. Isaiah 61, remember, the prophet prophesied about Jesus. The first three verses, especially, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. He has anointed me to preach good news to the poor, bind up the broken hearted, set the captives free. Verse three, especially, says to appoint unto those who mourn in Zion, those who are into negative emotions, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy, for mourning and the garment of praise instead of the spirit of heaviness. Listen to me. When the Holy Spirit comes into your life, one of the major things he will change first will be your emotions. One of the proofs that the Holy Spirit is in your life is in the emotions that rule your life. Uh, uh, let, me, let me show you a little bit of that. Um, in Acts chapter 2, you remember on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came. Verse 4 says, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. When you get down to verses 12 and 13, the Bible says people came around. When they looked at them, they were amazed and they were asking, what is this? Verse 13 says, and others mocked, saying, these men are drunk. They are full of new wine. Isn't that interesting? So the infilling of the Holy Spirit produced the same effects that alcohol will produce. And people noticed it. That's the reason why Paul the Apostle said in Ephesians 5.18, do not be drunk with wine in which there is excess. He said, but be continuously filled with the Spirit. It's the same result, amen. Because the one God originally designed was for us to be filled with the Spirit. Job 32 verse 8 says there's a spirit in man. The inspiration, the infilling of the Holy Spirit gives him what? Understanding. So it is when we are filled with the spirit, intoxicated by the spirit, that yes, we get to that frequency and we capture revelations, capture ideas. 
You have the gifts of the Spirit in 1 Corinthians 12, the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom. You can capture things, the designing of spirits. You can sense what's going on. You can know things your mind would not have known on a normal day. When you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you don't need cocaine to do it. It's destructive. Amen. Amen. There are people who are married and who are driven to alcohol to relieve marital stress. But that's not the way God designed. The Holy Spirit is the way out for us. Amen. Amen. So if we continue in the Galatians 5 passage, verses 22 to 26, it says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance. Okay, I'm, I'm reading from New International Version. Forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited. Doing what? Provoking and envying each other. That's what happens in a marriage where people are not filled with the Spirit. A Christian marriage must be different. Amen. There are Christian men who, when they don't go the way of the world, they still take marijuana. They take alcohol. They are trying to relieve stress. Okay, we're driven to do funny things. But what's the key? Being filled with the Spirit. If you read Ephesians 5, very interesting. Ephesians 5 that I quoted earlier on, the verse 18. Don't be drunk with wine where there is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Then Paul goes on and says, singing psalms to yourselves. I like that. When you are filled with the Spirit, You'll be singing. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> You'll be singing throughout the course of the day because the Spirit gives you joy. Okay, gives you capacity for love, gives you peace that nobody can understand or explain. So it's in the trail of that thought that Paul gets to verse 22 and says, Wives, submit yourselves to your husbands. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Listen, you need to be spirit-filled. You've got to be a spirit-filled woman to submit to your husband. Some of these guys are not worth submitting to. But, ah, ladies, why did you confirm that? <laughs> be careful, he's sitting next to you. When you get home, may I ask you, why did you say yes to what Pastor Sam said? <laughs> Okay, but listen, when you do it, you are doing it not because of him, but because you're a Christian. Jesus Christ is your Lord. You do it because of Christ. And it gives Christ the opportunity to walk in your life. There's no point frustrating what you are asking him to change. You see, when you bring in the negative emotions, he can't walk. He changes your emotions before he changes your circumstances. Did you read Proverbs 15, 15? All the days of the afflicted are evil, but he that is of a merry heart has a continual feast. In his presence, there's fullness of joy. You want God to walk, create the atmosphere for him. So, he says, wife, submit yourselves to your husband. And then goes further down, and you get to verse 25 of Ephesians 5, and he says, husbands, love your wives. Yes, the guys were happy when I was talking to the ladies, but now it's your turn. Oh, she said yes. You need to be spirit-filled to love your wife. Amen. Amen. Romans 5, 5, the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. A Christian man needs to be filled with the Spirit. Filled with the Spirit. Or else marriage will drive you nuts. When those chemicals were working on your brain, you didn't have time to think about what it will look like when she's pregnant. All you were thinking was what will happen on the wedding night and during the honeymoon. You did, you, there was no point thinking about the results. That was too far. <laughs> now she's seven months pregnant. She likes to eat different things at different times. She wakes you up in the middle of the night that she's feeling uncomfortable here. That's, that's, that's it. That's when some guys can't take it. Disturbing my sleep. Are you aware I'm going to work in the morning? Yes. 
But are you aware she's carrying another human being? So if you were carrying a human being, would you go to work conveniently like that? <laughs> See? <laughs> so when, it, when we're going through the difficult emotions, we forget Bible. Forget scriptures. Yeah, have you seen Christians before? <laughs> when Christian couples, when they are quarreling, <laughs> a friend of mine told me, he, he saw this couple, and they, I mean, this, this very, quote unquote, spiritual couple in church. But the day they went at it, and the man was saying, <laughs> you're, 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 you're taking me for granted because I'm born again, right? Because I, I will show you today. I will show you. <laughs> see, see, see. See, you see how dangerous these chemicals are? If you are not under the influence of the Holy Spirit, even being born again will be suspended. <laughs> how do you get filled with the Spirit? Prayer. Prayer. Romans 8.26 says, we do not pray, know what we should pray for. It says, for the Spirit himself helps our infirmities or our weaknesses. We're human. We were never designed to function on our own. Once we keep the Spirit of God out, other spirits have the opportunity to come in. This Spirit helps our infirmities. We do not even know what we pray for as we are, but the Spirit himself helps us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Pray. You deal with negative emotions through prayer. Philippians 4, 6, be anxious for nothing. Be afraid of nothing. Don't go into hatred. Be anxious for nothing but in everything through what? Prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known to God. What will be the result? And the peace of God that passes all understanding. That's how to pass from a negative emotion to a positive one. You can be feeling anger one moment and be singing the next one. If you know how to switch to the right channel. And it's the channel of the Holy Spirit. Did I hear you say amen? amen? Nobody should pray more than a married Christian man. You need prayer. Instead of reacting, I'm the one you are talking to like that. I'm the one you are talking Stop listening to her. Listen to the Holy Spirit. You're on the wrong channel. You are nagging me. Holy Spirit is not nagging you. Listen to the Holy Spirit. <laughs> so, while you are feeling the anger, you are tempted to, 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 to ask inside, Holy Spirit, what should I do? Holy Spirit, what should I say? You are connecting to the highest level of wisdom available on the planet. As a Christian woman, pray. And then take time to look in the word. Amen. Our guidance is there.